On the north side of the choir in, in Durham Cathedral, opposite Hatfield's tomb and the bishop's throne, stands the fine Victorian monument of Joseph Barber Lightfoot, Bishop of Durham from 1879 to his death in 1889. Since leaving King Edward's school in Birmingham, Lightfoot had spent his entire life at Trinity College, Cambridge, where he became the preeminent New Testament and early church scholar of his day. And it was only after much agonising that he accepted Prime Minister Benjamin Disraeli's invitation to forsake the groves of Academe for the coal face of industrial North East England. Nevertheless, as bishop, he devoted himself wholeheartedly to the demands of Christian leadership and ministry amidst the then vastly expanding population of his diocese, including hiving off the northern part of it to form the new see of Newcastle. But it was ultimately at the cost of his health, and he died when he was only 61. He is buried before the altar in the chapel of Auckland Castle. Such was the affection which had come to surround Lightfoot during his ten years as bishop, that soon after his death a public fund was established to support two projects in his memory. One was the restoration of the chapter house, about which I've spoken in an earlier talk. The other was the erection of this marble and alabaster memorial prominently placed in the choir of the cathedral. As with the chapter house, the overall design was the work of Charles Hodgson Fowler, then architect to the dean and chapter, who drew his inspiration from the great medieval tombs in the cathedral of Thomas Hatfield and the Nevilles but rejected their gilded grandeur in favour of a simplicity befitting the Victorian scholar-bishop. The tomb-style chest, decorated only with the coats of arms of Lightfoot himself and the Sea of Durham. Two eminently well-connected sculptors of the day were responsible for the dignified white marble effigy resting on top. It was commissioned from Sir Edgar Bohm, sculptor in ordinary to Queen Victoria, then completed after his death by Alfred Gilbert, who went on to design the tomb of Victoria's grandson, Prince Albert Victor, in the Albert Memorial Chapel at Windsor. As a mark of his learning, the effigy has Lightfoot's feet resting against three large books in striking contrast to the lion, symbol of power, which on the other side of the choir crouches at the feet of the medieval Bishop Hatfield. The finishing touch for the memorial was provided by Brooke Frost Westcott, who had been Lightfoot's colleague from the time he first arrived in Cambridge and now succeeded him as Bishop of Durham. Westcott composed the Latin epitaph around the base of the effigy, needing only six words at the centre of his text to capture the achievements of his lifelong friend. Antiquitatis investigator, student of the past, Evangelii interpres, interpreter of the gospel, and Ecclesiae Rector, Leader of the Church.